All right, thank you for joining me for part four of why we should believe in Jesus. So um, we have discussed a lot already about why we should believe in Jesus and how it makes such a difference in our lives. Um, and I think that there's these things that they're not really taught. And it's hard to kind of talk about it, you know, as you can see. Um, there's things I can't put into words because it's such a, it's, it's more of, you have to experience it. And also because it's in a spiritual, it's in a spiritual, um, you're walking in the spiritual realm with, with God, with Jesus, and with Holy Spirit. And so it's hard to put that into, you know, what we are used to here in this world. Um, so it's hard to understand it. But these are all things that you learn by by walking with Jesus in, in a relationship with him with God and by reading the Bible um, as well because that again that the, the Bible is alive it's the word and, and the word is alive and it and it shows you how to become how to live now as your new cre as you are a new creature in Christ um, so let's continue and finish up um, with just a few more reasons why you should believe in Jesus all right so one is very popular of course I've heard this from so many people, and I myself, you know, have said the same, but I'm sure you've probably heard this from somebody, but, um, there's always that talk you have with somebody about, there's this place inside of you that it feels empty, and nothing you do feels it. it. It feels like nothing that you do fills it you know we try to fill this hole with you know with uh this hole that we have inside of us has loneliness that we try to fill up with people even if it's bad associations or it's just hunger or this lust or this emptiness that we try to feel with bad things. I mean, not necessarily bad things. And like, for example, um, hobbies. Like, we try to get our mind off of our loneliness or our emptiness by doing a hobby or something. Which works sometimes. It's just that we have this longing in us we have this longing in us as human beings and we try to fill it with temporary pleasures that we end up craving again and again for fulfillment and even with things that can actually end up hurting us or making things worse and that's actually what Jesus is talking about when he says you know that when you thirst I will provide with you a life-giving water that doesn't ever end so or doesn't run out so you don't feel that craving for something because Jesus feels that craving and it's because we were made with that because that's where God belongs in us every one of us feels like we have this void in us that nothing quite feels and that's because that is supposed to be filled only by God's Spirit. By God. We were, create, we were created for Him. God created us for Him. To worship Him. So nothing can take His place. And we can't, we can't try and ignore that. We can't try and fill it. Because it's not ever going to be completely satisfied. The only satisfaction that lasts in His whole is God and having that connection with him and that love that place for him as our creator you know as our leader as our king and as our God it's a fulfillment of our soul so I you know once you once you accept Jesus as your savior and your um Lord, that hole becomes 
it doesn't it's not even just filled it actually overflows you know kind of like David says you know like my cup overflows with joy and happiness it overflows um, and then the last reason I'm going to discuss um, as to why we should believe in Jesus is actually because um, there are people that don't believe that Jesus was who he said he was you know they believe oh yeah okay Jesus may have existed and he was a good man you know you've heard that over and over he's a prophet or he's a good man this and that but they don't actually believe that he is a messiah <laughs> so the other reason we should believe in Jesus is because Jesus is the messiah he is the savior that G uh, that Jehovah God appointed to save us from our sins and how do we really know that well yeah of course you know you learn when you read the gospels about Jesus's um crucifixion so you know yeah he died for us and he he said you know he prayed to God forgive us it is finished he fulfilled that and he was risen again right so we learn that but also it's not just in the gospels like the prophets of the old testament the whole old testament is just like laced with scriptures about referring to the Messiah who is Jesus so I'm, I'm gonna give you a few scriptures um, that you can read um, because these are about Jesus right in fact I'm gonna read some with you um, let's we can read Isaiah 53 and that actually talks about Jesus he was rejected he was not believed in he was beaten for no reason uh, he didn't do anything he was sinless and he was condemned to death um, beaten and crucified he didn't fight back he didn't open his mouth to save himself because he knew that that was the will of God and it describes this in the um, Old Testament in the Psalms David talked about Jesus David talked about Jesus not a bone in his body was broken and um, Je none of Jesus' bones were broken although they could have been and may should have been since they beat him so bad um, they you know they uh, spit in his face they they would beat him and hit him um, and mocked him and the and Isaiah talks about him being mocked and um, let's go ahead and read Isaiah 9 7 okay <clears throat> so actually we'll, we'll read uh, 6 for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from the from that time forward even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this they're talking about Jesus he's the Prince of Peace Jesus is he was the descendant of David and we learned in um, you know my my uh, video sermon about who Jesus is that his kingdom will never end so and it will overthrow other king uh, all the governments and um, he will be the ultimate king and that his kingdom will never end so right here in the Old Testament Isaiah is talking about Jesus right? um, and then if you look in the scriptures um, of the gospel like Matthew you can see that actually Jesus' lineage is in the line of King David so that was completely right
these are prophets way before Jesus was born but they were they were foretelling Jesus is coming so Jesus lines up with who the Messiah is um, Zechariah let's look at Zechariah actually 11 11 verse 12 Then I said to them, If it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, that princely price they set on me. It says, um, So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. You know how much Jesus was betrayed for? Judas betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Uh, and we can see that in Matthew 26. So, it's obviously referencing to the Messiah. And Jesus, again, lines up to the Messiah, who they were talking about. Hosea is talking about being, him being pierced, and Jesus was pierced when he was on the cross. So that's Hosea 11, 1, and Matthew 2, 15. You can read that. And it talks about, again, Jesus was the one that was... and pierced um, oh I'm sorry that was another scripture <laughs> but this one is the same um, talking about the fulfillment of the Messiah what does it say and there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. And um, in Hosea, it talks about the Messiah coming from Egypt, too. Well, Jesus actually came out of Egypt when Herod died. So, again, it's, um, it's talking about the Messiah, and who fulfilled it? Jesus did. Jesus did. There's also about him being born in Bethlehem, and Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Um, and at that time, they didn't really believe in that. I mean, the people didn't really believe in Jesus because he was, um, you know, he, he was from Galilee, and he was a Nazarene. But he was actually born in Bethlehem. See, out of Egypt I called my son. I mean, that's God talking about Jesus. So, Jesus being the Savior of his people, which is Israel. So, you'll get to know that as you read the Old Testament. But, um, these are all fulfillments. Jesus was the only person that was actually sinless and condemned for nothing. That he didn't do anything wrong. Willing to bear everybody's sin. And, um, to this very day he's rejected he's doubted and not believed in but yet Jesus is the only one that was able to do so many miracles and signs no other person was able to so these are I mean it's it's obvious that Jesus really was the Messiah so why believe in Jesus? Because he wasn't just a prophet or just a good man. He was the Messiah. He was the Savior that God gave us to save us, to save the world from eternal death. Um, so, but these are just a few reasons why you should believe in Jesus and, and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Um, because 
there's so many reasons why knowing Jesus is beyond it's the best thing and if you ask him to show himself to you in your heart and your life and you come to know him more and more you'll see that you'll see him so um, and you'll be so thankful that he called you to live for him so thank you again for joining me today and learning about Jesus and why we should believe in Jesus please share with everybody you know and please um, just invite Jesus into your life I'm sure you'll be so thankful you did thank you and have a blessed day